So here we are. Here's the Arafura Sea. And every year, there is a seasonal coastal upwelling system developing. And you can, you can see it when you look at chlorophyll A satellite data. And it's shown here in August for the year, as one example, uh, 2014. And this is the Northwestern Arafura Sea. And you can see the red areas. This is the most of that region is actually develops a, a plankton blooms. Okay. And the value of chlorophyll A is about three milligrams per cubic meter. That's the maximum value that you get. It's sort of one third compared to the, to the major, um, to the big four coastal. Okay. Opposed to that, if you look in, 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 in uh, January or so, there is, is not much uh, chlorophyll uh, activity in, in the region. Okay, Noting that some of the red that you see in this figure might be actually biased from a uh, river uh, discharge of sediment. No plankton, sediment. Okay, All right. So why is that? This happens during the time where you actually have winds blowing from the east. And this is now shown here in the bottom graph. Bottom graph shows you wind stress. The wind from the east are these blue bars in this graph. Okay, You have it for January. February is wind coming from the west. And so on. Then you have a transition where this southeast monsoon starts. Very strong in May, June, July, and, and August, and so on. You have six months of winds from the east, and during this time, the chlorophyll, uh, the plankton bloom slowly starts. You, know, you get a first exceeding one milligrams per cubic meter. Okay, and you can work out what is the area of that uh, these these uh, chlorophyll blooms. Okay, and you get later on. Uh, higher concentrations develop. Okay. So now how does this work? How do you get it? It's all very shallow water. There is no uh, known uh, seasonal uh, uh, river discharge that could explain that. So it's actually a limited river discharge during, during that time. So how does it work? Okay. And now how you can test how it works is using a computer-based model. And I'm only doing that very, very briefly, just to that you get an idea. Okay, so we, we have a model domain, and this is the model domain here up in the top left. And this is the Arafura Sea. Okay, you have Torres Strait on one side, and you have the um, um, Arafura the channel here on this, this side, the connection. And so all very, very shallow. And you force the model from... A prescribed wind distribution. This is the wind field here. The second one, panel B, shows you the wind distribution, and this is during the southeast monsoon. You can see these arrows show the wind direction, and relatively strong. The colors show you how strong. Point, point 0.15 Pascal are the, is the strongest winds here, and this is how you drive the model. Okay, this is a hydrodynamic model. There is no other things in it like. No tides in there, no fresh water discharges or so. Temperature, salinity, relatively realistic, the, the distributions. Okay. In addition to that, it also includes a nutrient uh, distribution. Nutrients is a passive conservative tracer that can be moved into the domain advection and that can also be mixed okay and initially it show you the distribution here on the on the left okay in terms of the nutrient uh, concentrations very low this is the the, the 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 dashed line very low near the surface and then linearly increasing to high values of uh, 20 units at depth below 200 meters and this indeed is only in the Bender sea Essentially, you have no nutrients to start with in the Arafura Sea, and all the high nutrient concentrations are outside. So you need a mechanism to actually bring the nutrients 
into the um, Arafura Sea. Let's let's have a look what the what the model predicts. 